Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We're studying how to live and not die. And we've been teaching this for five weeks. And our text scripture is what? Can you remember? It's Psalm 118, verse 17. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And then last week and this week, we are specifically talking about our covenant of protection. And it is a covenant sealed in the blood of Jesus because God has promised in his word to protect us. We've looked at protection promises and we have been most recently talking about how to live and walk in supernatural protection. And we're going through Psalm 91 for some very specific keys on how to receive protection. And number one, Psalm 91, one dwell in the secret place of the most high and under his wings. That is 24 seven living and abiding in him. Number two, Make him your protector, your deliverer, your shield. You call him that. Psalm 91 verse 2. I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. You have to say it and you have to call him that. As it says in Psalm 91 9. If you make the most high your dwelling, your refuge, then no harm will befall you. You have to make him that by calling him your shield, your deliverer, your protector. Praise the Lord. And then we talked about the shield, which is a spiritual force field that is activated around you. And when you pray over your family, your spouse, your children, and your grandchildren, and don't forget, include your property, your home, your car, vehicles, all of your uh, personal property, you cover it, uh, you, you um, include it in the force field. We'll get to that today in more detail. But these are all included in the force field of God's power. Uh, First Peter one, five, you who through faith or believing are shielded by God's power. So God's power is a spiritual force field around you. How? By believing through faith, the sh- taking up the shield of faith, Ephesians six sixteen. These are actions on your part. And then yesterday we were specifically talking about Faith again, and there are two key fundamental parts to faith, and that is meditation in the word to believe it, to build faith, and then confessing the scriptures. So meditate on the scripture promises for protection to build your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Meditate on it day and night. Why? So it becomes revelation in your heart. It will drop from your head to your heart and turn from information into revelation. It becomes your revelation when you get it in your heart. And then when you get it in your heart, you speak the scriptures, confess the scriptures of God of, of concerning your protection every day. And as we said yesterday, you turn um, any scripture that is in second person or third person tense, then you change it to first person, me, my, and then you can include your family, us. Amen. Now, let me go on. This would be, I guess, under how to receive And live and walk in supernatural protection. After meditating and confessing the scriptures. The next key that I would share with you. Would be receive the covenant of protection. By taking communion. 
receive the covenant of protection by taking communion. And when you take communion, the Lord's Supper, according to Matthew 26, verses 26 to 28, and also um, Corinthians 11, as it teaches about communion, the Lord's Supper, specifically list the promises that you are activating by covenant and by communion. You can believe to receive healing, scripture promises, provision for financial material needs, and those scripture promises for your provision, and then also protection scripture promises. And so as you take the juice and the bread, open your Bible and read the scripture promises that you are by faith activating in your life. And it can be for healing, provision, and protection for your children to be saved, your spouse to be saved, for a job, for a home, whatever it is that you need. Now, I taught about this in the teaching I did called the blood covenant. This is so important. And again, it is very foundational. This is something that in my life has been the anchor for my faith. According to Hebrews chapter six, where it says by two immutable things, I believe those things are the blood and the body of Jesus in which it is impossible for God to lie. He sealed it in blood, the blood and body, this, the covenant meal. And so it becomes an anchor. It says in Hebrews six for your soul to anchor your soul to God's word. I'm standing on these promises. These promises are coming to pass in my life. I believe I receive them. And so I encourage you again, if you didn't hear that, you can go to my website at victoriousfaith.co and go to the radio broadcast archives. They're listed there, available 24-7. And look for the series that I taught about the blood covenant. And that revelation is one that changed my life. It was actually New Year's Day, January 1st, 1996. And the Lord told me, spoke to my heart. I was reading the Bible, praying, seeking him on New Year's Day. And he said, I want you to take communion every day for the next 30 days, meditating on the blood covenant. I did that and it changed my life. The blood covenant became the rock foundation for my faith in God, knowing that everything God has said to me is written in blood. It is undisputable. It is infallible because I realized it's all in blood. It cannot be broken. And when I got that revelation then people have asked me when I was traveling full time as a missionary, I traveled from 2001 through 2000, the middle of 2013, 12 and a half years around the world, country to country to country. In those 12 years, I was in 19 countries. Prior to that, I had been in six countries, but in those 12 years, I was in 19 countries, traveled as a single woman alone. People said, weren't you afraid? How did you do it? Was there a big organization sponsoring and paying all your bills? No. The answer was many times I left home, even without all that I needed for the whole trip financially. But I went by faith and God provided I stepped out by faith to obey God and went country to country, believing God sometimes for the very next airline ticket to get to the next place. 
and country to country. I traveled alone, except I always say I traveled with the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and a host of angels. But in the, in the natural, in the flesh, I was alone. And how did I do it? By the blood covenant. In everything I did, when it came to my protection, when I was in dangerous places, I went into dangerous places. I preached in a Muslim place, places where there was even terrorist activity. I preached right in the middle of it. I preached in the communist country, in the underground church, having to totally disguise myself from head to toe and hide from the police in the communist country. I've been in all kinds of different situations. I've been in in storm on the sea. I've shared the testimony of being in on the sea in a small boat. When there was a hurricane passing by, the sea almost tipped our boat over. But by exercising authority, commanded the, the waves to be still. And they were stilled. I have seen stormy waters become calm through speaking in the name of Jesus. I did it. I was there. So I'm sharing these things to let you know what I have done. I activate the covenant. I activated the covenant of provision when I needed provision. There were times when I, I remember one time I was leaving one country, going into another country. When I arrived in my destination, I realized that half the money that I had when I left was gone. It was the money I needed to live on while I was there. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I'm not going to call home. I'm not going to, you know, my family, people would send me money, but I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm not going to tell anybody that I have a need. I'm living here in this country. You brought me here. You're going to take care of me here. You're going to meet my needs here. I went into the very first service that I went into. I gave my offering as a seed, planted seed, and believed God for harvest, operating the spiritual laws of the kingdom. While I was there, people kept coming up to me and saying, Cherry, the Lord said to give you this. Cherry, the Lord said to give you this. Cherry, the Lord said to give you this. The Lord continued to supply my need while I was in that country. I was not on a salary. I was not receiving love offerings, but people that God spoke to came and said, God said to give you this. And he met my needs while I was there. I was activating the law of sowing and reaping. I've activated the law of protection. Um, when I would leave home now, let me share with you what I did for protection before I would leave home. Usually the night before I would leave the next day would be my departure. And I'm leaving home from Colorado to get on the airline and to fly to the other side of the world. And be, the night before, usually after everybody went to bed, I would go in the kitchen, get the bread and the juice, sit down at the kitchen table, open my Bible, and I would specifically read Psalm 91 and Psalm 121. Psalm 91 and Psalm 121. And I would read those scriptures. Let me read for you Psalm 121. It says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your, and I would always change that to my, he will not let my foot slip. He who watches over It says you and I change it to me. He who watches over me will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel and I change the word Israel to cherry. You put your name in there. John, Sarah. Indeed, he who watches over cherry will neither slumber nor sleep. And I also wrote in my Bible there because the King James translation says keeps. And I like to say both. He who watches over and keeps me will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over and keeps cherry will neither 
slumber nor sleep. Verse five, the Lord watches over and keeps me. The Lord is my shade at my right hand. The sun will not harm me by day nor the moon by night. Verse seven, the Lord will keep me from all harm. He will watch over my life. King James, he will preserve my life. That's where I wrote beside that in my Bible. He is my life preserver. And I think of, you know, on the ships, those rings that are called life preservers. He is my life preserver. And verse eight, the Lord will watch over my coming and going both now and forevermore. He will watch over my coming and going both now and forevermore. And so I would read that he is. And I say, Lord, you are watching my coming and going both now and forevermore. Psalm 28 says I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. So before I leave home and remember, I'm reading this and I'm taking communion the night before I leave for overseas. And I would take the juice and the bread of communion and I would open my Bible and read Psalm 91 and Psalm 121. And say, Father God, I receive your covenant of protection right now in Jesus name. And you, I read these promises. You are my protection. Even Psalm 32, seven says you are my hiding place. Now I use that when I went in the communist country. You are my hiding place. I am hidden in Christ. That's a New Testament scripture. I'm hidden in Christ. And Psalm 32, 7, you are my hiding place. I used those scriptures when I went into the communist country because I had to hide from the police. If the police saw me, I would be kicked out. The, the church that I was with, they could be arrested and thrown in jail. So I was believing for being hidden in Christ as I went into this communist country. And if you want to read about that, that's in my book called Adventures with Jesus, which is a journal of my 12 years of missionary travels in 19 countries from 2001 to 2013. And so that's in my book called Adventures with Jesus. You can find it on my website under the tab called Cherry's Books. And so I declared these. And then after I read those promises, I would drink the juice, eat the bread and say, Lord, I receive this now sealed in the covenant of Jesus Christ, the blood and body of Jesus. It is sealed. It is done. It is settled forever. I thank you, Lord, that I go out and I come in with no harm done to me. I am protected. I am safe. I am shielded by you as I go out and as I come in. Thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And I would take the juice, drink the juice, eat the bread, and say, Amen. I receive this settled and sealed in the covenant of communion. And so this is a very powerful tool According to Hebrews chapter six, let me take you to that real quickly. I just quoted it to you earlier, but I want to read it to you because I would read this all the time in uh, Hebrews six, 16 through 20 Hebrews six sixteen through 20 men swear by someone greater than themselves and the oath. Now, remember, every promise is an oath. The oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Verse 17, because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. Verse 18, 
God did this so that by two unchangeable things, King James says immutable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie. We who have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul firm and secure. Now it says by two unchangeable things or by two immutable things and different Bible scholars have said different things. So they think it's the word and the name of Jesus or the word and the spirit. Well, it's talking about oath. Oaths are confirmed throughout history, especially in ancient history. Every oath that was a strong oath was sealed by a blood covenant. And the blood covenant meal is bread and wine or or juice as we would use today. Every covenant, every oath would actually, if it was a strong oath and they wanted to make it unchanging, permanent, they would make an oath and seal it with a blood covenant. And that's what God did. If you go back and listen, it's on my radio broadcast archives to the whole teaching about blood covenant. That's what God did with Abraham in Genesis. And then that's what God did through Jesus Christ. When Jesus died on the cross and in Matthew 26 at the last supper, he said, this is my blood of the new covenant. And this is my body given for you. The blood and body are the meal taken in sealing an oath and a covenant promise. And so I believe that the two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, they are the blood and the body of Jesus, which are symbolized by juice and bread. And so that is the communion. I believe personally, very strongly, this is talking about covenant meal, blood and body. And then it says in verse 19, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. So that when you take the communion, the juice and the bread, you can anchor your faith. It's not to change God. God is unchanging, but he wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose clear. So he confirmed it with an oath and with the covenant. So he's trying to confirm and convince you. So then you can be convinced your faith can be anchored to the promises when you seal it in the communion, receiving communion, the blood and body of Jesus. And so that's what I would do before I leave home. I would take communion as I, after reading, sit down Take the bread and juice and read Psalm 91 and Psalm 121 and any other protection scriptures or any other scriptures that I was receiving by faith at that moment as I was going out. But believing God that I'm protected going out and I am protected coming in, that God watches over my coming and going both now and forevermore. Now you can believe the same thing for yourself your spouse, your children, and your grandchildren. And as I said before, that God will honor your faith and prayers for your children and grandchildren, especially in this area of protection, even when they are not serving God. Now, there are times, you know, I we can't always know what all is involved in a situation, but even times when they are not obeying God, God can have an access to supernaturally protect and deliver them through your faith and your prayers and through your standing on the covenant for them and including them in your circle of protection, the shield of faith, the force field that you activate and put up by faith. And so You name 
yourself, your children and your grandchildren, and your spouse, also your property, your home and your vehicles, and you name it all and you put it inside God's shield, force field of his protection and his power watching over you. Praise the Lord. Well, that's the part that I wanted to share with you today. Today, we are talking about taking communion to receive and activate the covenant. This is just an action on your part that anchors your soul in believing that you are protected. Hallelujah. Receive the covenant of protection by taking communion. Praise the Lord. I encourage you to take communion today and I encourage you to even do it with your family. If you have your spouse and children near you, your grandchildren, sit down at the table and do it together. Together, read the Bible, Psalm 121, Psalm 91, and together take the juice and the bread and together activate the shield of faith around your family. Praise the Lord. I want to invite you real quickly to come to our Victorious Faith Service this Saturday at 6 o'clock p.m. You can go to my website at victoriousfaith.co and look at the Victorious Faith Service schedule for the details of the time and location and a map for the directions. Come, you will be blessed and fed by the word of God. Now join me again tomorrow and remember God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.